Hello, my name is Hennan and I'm here to talk about financial time series forecasting via SEMDAM LSTM with exogenous features. Um, this work was submitted to Brasis 2020 and the authors are me, Hennan de Luca Avila, and Glauber de Bona, who is my professor. Uh, we're going to talk about the objective, which, which is to enhance financial time series prediction accuracy of SEMDAM LSTM model by using exogenous features. SEMDAM LSTM model is a starting point I have taken. Um, the method will investigate the effects of adding the exogenous features and the techniques to improve learning in this case, and the results will answer how can we use the exogenous features to improve the model's accuracy. Just for some quick context here, um, we're in 2020. Uh, using the Senda LSTM from 2019 Sal's work um, as a starting point. SEMDAM is a signal decomposition method proposed in 2011 by Torres, which in turn is based on EMD in 1997. Same year, Hawker Reader uh, proposed the LSTM. Just for a quick reference here, um, Fourier transform came in 1822. Uh, the, the wavelet theory first appeared in 1909, which is based on Fourier transform. Then Koifman and Dobeshi evolved it. Um, the Yule Walker autoregressive model came in 1930, and the Arma model came in 1970. Uh, the artificial intelligence contributions here. Just for a quick reference, the back propagation through time and gradient descent came in 1985. It's nice to see how this all evolved together. Um, so let's talk about the, the work that we're taking as a starting point. First of all, let me, let me show you how a SEMDAM decomposition looks like. Uh, SEMDAM stands for Complete Ensemble Empirical Mode Decomposition with Adaptive Noise. Uh, it generates the IMF's intrinsic mode functions, which we can see that the first one, the first ones here, the the low level ones, shows us the high frequency behaviors of this signal, this original signal here, and the the high level ones shows us the long trends of the signal, along with the residue, which is the longest trend of all. Uh, it has a nice property of summing all the components together um, then recomposing the signal so um, it recomposes the signal without significant loss in this case we're considering a univariate time step series um, the SEMDAM is based on the EMD empirical mode decomposition which, which the core is the sifting process uh, the sifting process uh, is, is basically getting the uh, the maxima and the minima uh, envelopes for us for a given signal with splines and then averaging it so we have this one in the middle here and subtracting the original signal from the the average and then we may have the first imf and then we repeat the process uh, uh, um, on and on again until we reach some stop conditions such as um, number of iterations or uh, a energy threshold or something like that. Tal's work architecture was to use the closing price time series as a feature, the input target feature, uh, decomposed the set with send them generating different IMFs, and each each IMF was predicted by a single neural prediction model and then the results were arithmetically summed together to recompose the 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 original feature as a predicted feature. The main benefit is the use of SEMDAM to separate behaviors of different time frequencies making it easier for the neural networks to learn patterns and a limitation here is that it, that it deals with a thing with a, with a single feature and it also does not provide any architecture with send them to handle multiple time series inputs since send them only works with one time series 
So what are the exogenous features that we're taking into consideration here? The daily open, high, low and close prices and the, tra the trading volume are considered and a target feature is still the closing price and we call the others exogenous. The data source we use is Yahoo Finance and we do some math preparation and a signal here uh, the financial signal here, which is to bring it to, in between 0 and 1. The, uh, we subtract the minimum and divide by the maximum range. <coughs> so one of, of the greatest um, contributions of our work here is the data flow architecture to handle multiple uh, input features. In the original data here, we have all the, the, the features we talked about in the last slide and each one of them will be will be send them decomposed separately we will, will then result uh, in different IMFs here and let's say we're interested in predicting this this feature 2 uh, we're going to predict the feature 2 IMF 1 with this neural model which will be fed with the first IMFs of all of the features and the second IMF predictor will also be fed with the second IMFs of all the the the, the decomposed features. A nice idea we had here was to use a simpler model to predict the smooth um, IMFs, which shows us the long trends. We don't need a complex model to predict them, and we use the cubic splines projection since the the emd is based on cubic splines and then we sum arith we arithmetically sum them together to have the feature two target prediction so let's move forward what is our neural model architecture dropout layer double lstm layer double dense layer and then uh, the, de the dense layer has a liquid relu activation function um, which avoids the dead zone and the dead zone became even more frequent when we we grew the input data with the uh, exogenous features so that addressed that um, which what is the neural model training iteration step so these columns here are all the features after the math transformation to bring it uh, between 0 and 1 and uh, after the send them decomposition. Um, here we have a certain IMF level for all of them and we use a rolling window. Let's say the rolling window in this case is size 3 and the first 3 days are going to be this whole matrix here and this matrix will be fed into the, the first tab here to predict the fourth day then we roll the window and the next three days we're, we're going to use to predict the, the fifth day and so on um, so since we use different um, models cubic splines and neural models what is the best architecture we found so far First of all, let me just show you some hyperparameters here. Any hyperparameter that is not here is considered to be the default from the Keras framework. We're going to use the MSC metric to optimize each IMF in the training steps. And the MAPE metric, MAPE, we're going to call it, is the main metric to focus when analyzing the recomposed prediction. MAP is better for recomposed series because it takes off the effects of, of series overall magnitude over the metric itself. It divides by the magnitude here. So this graph is important here. This graph shows us all the different combinations with predicting certain IMFs with splines and certain IMFs with neural models. At full left here we have all the IMFs being predicted with only splines and then we gradually add change the spline model in the first IMF for the neural model and 
then we change the second one in this case here the first and the second are being predicted by the neural network and the uh, and the rest is, are being predicted by splines and so on until we have here only neural networks predicting all the imfs we have tested this um against the top 10 liquidity stocks from brazilian exchange and we can see that the overall shape here is a u curve which makes us think that there is some optimal point between the threshold at the imf2 and the threshold at the imf3 let's investigate that um, so here we are comparing the relative modification improvement um, relative to the sendam lstm which is the starting point and here we have the, the threshold at imf3 meaning that we're going to predict the first three imfs with neural models and in this case here the first two imfs and at, at this last column here we're not using splines to predict just the exogenous features here we use just splines and single features and here we use the exogenous features in the neural models and the splines for the rest um the using only exogenous features we had some bad results here which means although we we know that it's mathematically possible to for an ideal model with exogenous features to converge into the same results as the model with a single feature uh, with the tools we have nowadays convergence difficulties and actual problem must be considered and addressed so this is because of convergence difficulties the best result we had here was to use the threshold in an IMF2 um, and using the, the exogenous features with splines. So here we are. Here are some example predictions. The blue line represents the real values and the green lines are the predicted values. The main conclusion of this work is that along with the benefit of more information that comes with exogenous features as input, there is actually a drawback that also comes with it, which is the convergence difficulties. Um, although we have more information available with different exogenous input, it is harder to find uh, a learning convergence which benefit from all of it. So that's a classic trade-off between the the plenty of information and the difficulty of finding the right convergence spot for a neural network to learn all the best from all the information okay but that doesn't mean we can we cannot use the exogenous features to improve accuracy we have found a way to improve accuracy using exogenous features this way is to balance the use of different models with different IMFs. So we use splines and splines for the long trends and the neural models for the, the short trends for the high frequency. The neural net LSTM networks benefit mostly from high frequency signals and splines benefit from long trend signals. So this equilibrium is where we, we found the best results. Um, for future work, we think our model works best for the chosen time series length. So we fixed the length, the time series length, but also the threshold, the best threshold may, may vary along with the time series length. And this may be studied. studied. Um, our architecture is only considered LSTM and splines, but it fits any model you want. So many models and other series uh, of different nature rather than financial are also are, are also um, can also be fit um, the references here are the same as the paper so go check it out check the paper take a look let me just acknowledge here thanks for um, Scola Politecnica the Universidad de São Paulo which is my school and BTG Pactual for supporting the work and thanks to you for watching the video please feel free to reach me at my email and in case of any questions i really hope you enjoyed it and once once again thanks <laughs>